everybody, it's Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you some stretches and exercises for pes answering bursitis. Huh? Let's go with knee bursitis. Let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! So the pes answering bursa sits on the inner knee here, and three muscle tendons come down, and so that bursa is to protect those tendons. But when it gets inflamed and becomes an itis, it can be really, really painful. So some people might just call it a knee bursitis, but it does have a specific name for it. And pes answering, in case you care, means goose foot, because that's kind of how those tendons sit. So fun fact for you. So the first thing we're going to start off with is a hamstring stretch. You can stretch your hamstrings in a whole bunch of different ways, but my favorite way is just to use a strap so you can lie down and just kind of relax the rest of your body. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt, you can use a dog leash if you have one, or you can just use a, a big beach towel. But if you've got one with a loop, wrap it around your foot so it stays on nice and tight. And then go ahead and lie down. You want to try and keep your leg as straight as you can so your knee is going to stay pretty much locked out and then just bring it up. But you're not lifting your leg, you're pulling up your leg with the strap. So you're just gonna come up into that stretch. If you've got that itis, it might be pretty painful just right here, but if you can bring it all the way up a little bit more, go ahead and go as far as you comfortably can. And this is stretching the hamstrings, which you know are behind your knee is what people usually think, but there is one that comes around the side there, kind of where that bursa is. So you wanna make sure and stretch your hamstrings as well. So you're going to hold that stretch for 30 seconds and then do that a total of three times. If you want to do a combination hamstring calf stretch, when you come back up, you can pull down and bring your foot down and that should activate your calf muscles as well. But if you feel like this is too much, like maybe you're getting more of the calves than the hamstrings, then you can just sit up, bring that strap a little bit higher and just stretch the calf by pulling toward you. So again, your foot's relaxed. You're pulling with the strap. You're not actively moving that foot, but now you should feel that stretch in that calf area there. And again, holding that stretch for 30 seconds and then doing that three times. And then you wanna go into stretching your quad. So I'm gonna kinda switch legs just cause I'm gonna roll over onto my tummy, but just keep doing the, the leg that, that bothers you the most. So it's nice to have the loop because then just go ahead and wrap it all the way around to your ankle and then take the strap as you're turning around and put it over your shoulder like this. So if you need to bring it up a little bit higher, you can. And then just relax that leg and start pulling towards you. So the goal is to get that heel as close to your bottom as you can. And you should feel that stretch and that quad muscle in the front. So again, you don't want it to be super painful, but you want it to have some tension, be slightly uncomfortable where you're feeling a good stretch. And so again, this one holding for 30 seconds, relaxing and doing three times. Now, if you have some back issues, propping up on your elbows like this might be a little uncomfortable. So make sure the rest of your body is comfortable. So if you need to lie all the way down and just pull like this, you can, but most people are pretty comfortable this way. So again, 30 seconds, three times for that. Then the next stretch is going to go into a butterfly stretch, which is going to get your groin and those adductor muscles a little bit. And again, that one, those adductors come down into that pes answering area. So for a butterfly stretch, just bring your feet together like this and start sliding them in until you feel a stretch. If you need more of a stretch, you can place your elbows on your inner thighs and then push down and lean forward. But try and keep your back straight so you're not curling down like this. If you keep your back straight and just lean forward at your hips, you're gonna get a much better stretch. So again, that 30 seconds holding that stretch and then coming back up and doing that a total of three times. Some people like to actually bring their hands out and do the stretch like that so they can get a little bit further each time. You can do that, just still try and keep your back pretty straight. So I like this one a little bit better because then you can push down on your elbows and really open up those inner thigh muscles, those groin muscles to get that stretch in there. 
So now we're going to go into some exercises. With the first couple exercises, depending on, again, how comfortable your back is, you want to make sure to support your back, especially if you're having some back issues. But if you're pretty good sitting up, that's fine. I'm going to do them sitting up, but you can definitely do them lying down if you want to. So the first exercise is going to be a quad set. And so all a quad set is, is you're contracting that quad muscle, squeezing it, to get the knee to go down to the floor. If you want to roll up a towel and have a little target, you can, um, but really the goal is just to get that knee as straight as you can. So if you can see here, my quad muscle is squeezing as I'm pushing down. If you pull up your toes, that helps activate it as well. And so with the quad sets, you want to hold it just a little bit. So as you're squeezing, Hold for about three to five seconds and then relax. So you're just working those quad muscles to get them a little bit stronger, but not in a big, huge way yet where it's uncomfortable. So holding three to five seconds, starting off with about 10, and then you can kind of work your way up from there. Then you want to start working your hamstrings just a little bit, but same thing, just kind of slowly progressing into it because if you've got that bursitis, that irritation in that knee, a lot of movements, bending, straightening out, activating those muscles are pretty uncomfortable. So this one is just going to be a heel slide. And all you do with a heel slide is just how it sounds. I usually prop up my other leg just to kind of give me some support. And then you're just going to slide your heel up as far as you comfortably can. And again, you might this might be it right here. But go slide up as much as you can, get a nice stretch in there and then just slide it back down. So this is kind of a stretch exercise combination because as I'm pulling my heel up, as I'm sliding it up, I'm activating those hamstring muscles. I'm making them work. So I'm pulling, pulling, getting a good bend in the knee. So that's where the stretch is. And then just coming back down. So same thing kind of with the quad sets when you come up here where it's tight or where you don't want to go any further, hold it for about three to five seconds and then slide back down just to kind of get that working and then you know once you get to 10 of those if the next day you're fine and there's no irritation you can start bumping it up from there so then you're going to lie down again get nice and comfortable again i like propping up the opposite leg just because it takes pressure off of your back some people do this and it doesn't bother them but that kind of makes your back arch a little bit so i like having this propped up. Now you're going to do a straight leg raise. For the straight leg raise, it's just how it sounds. You want to keep that leg as straight as you can. And the best way to keep it straight and not bend the knee is to pull your toes up and that kind of helps lock everything out. That makes your quad contract, that makes your um, calves contract, and then so you can pull it up keeping that leg nice and straight. So use your other leg as a target so you're not swinging it all the way up you're just bringing it up till it's about level with the other side. So if you come up here, that's too much because that's going to make you use momentum and then you're not using your muscles to get it up there. And then nice and slowly come back down. So the coming back down, don't just use gravity and, and plop it back down. One, because it's probably going to hurt. And two, you're not, you're not working the muscles. And that coming back down is just as important, maybe even a little more important than coming up. So you want it to be a slow, controlled, smooth motion the whole time you do it. If you can, don't relax your leg all the way when you go down. If you need to take a little break, that's fine. But if you're coming up, when you go back down, maybe not even quite touch the ground. Leave it just above and then come back up so you have to keep those muscles tight and controlled the whole time. If you get to three sets of 10, two sets of 15, up to 20, 25, a couple sets of those, and those are easy, you can add a little ankle weight onto that and then start back over from there. The next one is going to be a side leg raise or we call it side hip abduction. So again, now we're saying that the top leg is my injured side, even though I haven't been working that side. So the injured side is on top. What you want to do is still keep that leg nice and locked out and straight but you want your whole body when you're on the side in a straight line. So when I come up with my leg, I don't want it to come forward and up. I really want it to go slightly back because that's going to keep myself in a straight line. You also want to lead with your heel. So it's not this because then that's not quite working the muscles. It's going with your heel up 
and back just a little bit. And so that's starting to work those hip muscles a little bit that have a lot to do with the knee. So just going up this way and then nice and slowly coming back down. So again, just starting off with about 10 to 15 of these, really kind of pushing back with that heel up. And then if you get a couple sets of those and you get up to 20, 25 with a couple of sets, then you can add that ankle weight. Then you're gonna go into a hip adduction, AD, which is on the inside, which again is kind of where that those tendons go over that bursa and um, is really painful. So this one might be tough to do. Just do a couple at first and see how it feels. But we're going back to now the injured leg is on the floor. And so with your top leg, you can either prop it up behind you or you can prop it in front of you, whichever is more comfortable. I'm just gonna prop it up behind me so you can see what my leg is doing. You still wanna keep it nice and straight and locked out. Pull up your toes to help lock it out. But this time it's not gonna be a really big movement. You're just lifting it a little bit off of the floor, but trying to keep your toes pointed forward this time. So again, if you already have some pain in that area there, this might be a little bit too much to start off with and you can just build your way up to it. But if you feel like you can do some, maybe just start off with three or four and then five or six and then work your way up from there. But don't feel like you need to do a whole lot in the beginning because it might not hurt a lot while you're doing it at the time, but you might be sore afterwards. So I think it's much easier to do a little bit and then progress your way up than instead of starting with a whole lot and then having to back off of it because you're so sore. So the last one is gonna be a clamshell. So we're going back to the top leg. The top leg is the one that you, that you're, you have the injury and you wanna work. With clamshells, it's really important to keep your hips perpendicular to the floor, straight up and down. When you do this motion, a lot of times people wanna roll back, but you really wanna try and keep it here so you can work all these hip muscles, which have a lot to do with that knee in general. So the glute knee, that IT band over there, all these kind of muscles, the glutes in general, um, have a lot to do with the knee as well. So bending your knees forward, kind of sitting on top of each other, and your feet sitting on top of each other. The feet are gonna stay together, and you're just gonna take that top knee and lift it up. Again, it doesn't have to go very high, because once you start going too high, your hips are gonna run a roll back. And if you roll back, then you're not really getting that exercise. So try and keep this straight up and down, and then just lift that leg a little bit that way. So knee coming off the other knee, but the feet are staying together. And so this looks pretty easy, and sometimes three or four are pretty easy, but once you start getting more than that, it's pretty tough. So again, just start with a little bit of these and see how you feel. Again, if you get up to 20, 25, and you're doing two, three sets and it's easy, you can either take an ankle weight and put it around the top thigh, or you can take a resistive band and wrap it around your thighs and then work it that way and that will give you some extra resistance. So those were your stretches and exercises for pes anserine bursitis or knee bursitis in general. I'd like to take a moment for wall of thanks. Thank you Ignazio P, Jim L, and FRD. If you'd like to be on the wall of thanks, make sure and click on the link up here to find out how and don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here and remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.